Dr. Kasten Wieland is a Middle East expert and is now joining us live from Berlin. Dr. Wieland, welcome to the show. It seems like it's going to be a treacherous Ramadan for many Palestinians who will be observing the holy month of fasting. Your thoughts? Well, yes, I think it's a crucial month um, for this whole conflict and for many Palestinians living in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. And we have uh, heard reports today that the first uh, numbers of uh, Palestinians have been barred from entering the Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, on the Temple Mount in East Jerusalem, which could further escalate the situation during Ramadan, except uh, apart from this problem that this um, uh, hostage deal, the, the, the further attempt to release more hostages from Hamas uh, has been stalled. And of course, uh, they are pushing back and forth whose fault it is, uh, I think both sides are heavily under pressure. Uh, Israel on the, the Israeli government on the one hand, but also Hamas, uh, as you have mentioned, also even being uh, threatened to be expelled from Qatar if they don't um, provide the list of living hostages left. So I think it's a crucial month also with regard to the humanitarian situation if this offensive will be extended um, in full to Rafah at the border to Egypt, where most Palestinians have gathered, mm -hmm. uh, uh, thinking that they are in a kind of safe zone. And that is, of course, for many people who observe this conflict, and especially in the Arab world, a red line, and that could further instigate emotions and uh, polarizations uh, towards this conflict. Doctor, who do you think is a stain in the cloth? of finding a solution to this crisis in Gaza. Israelis are fed up and wary with their Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Some say he has failed and needs to go. But ideally, who is the problem here? I think we have to differentiate between um, a general tendency in the Israeli public, because they also feel under a, you know, psychological sub subjective threat um, uh, from the northern front in, in Lebanon, but also from uh, from Hamas, and uh, that that they still condone the offensive in uh, in Gaza. But there is a rising number of Israelis criticizing the Isra Israeli government when it comes to their kind of warfare. Mm. And if that reaches the goal that they are pretending to, to reach, which is eliminating Hamas, I think there is a lack of definition what eliminating Hamas really means under these circumstances. And if you can uh, provide this goal with these kind of weapons and massive approach that Israel has been doing, we have to recall that this government in Israel has been formed because basically uh, one person who is the prime minister wanted to uh, avoid a uh, court case against him and other radical parties, splinter parties, trying to get to, to, to kind of uh, suck out the Israeli state for benefits uh, for their own. And this coal, kind of coalition uh, of the radical right wing and uh, has now been the government who is dealing with the worst crisis of Israel's history. And uh, so we have, a, uh, we have to distinguish between the government in charge that has that is now facing a possible second failure, which would be the failure of uh, ending this war and the failure of eliminating Hamas in the way how they defined it after the first failure, which was that the 7th of October could happen in the first place. Mm -hmm. So they are also, uh, there are enormous pressures within Israel of different political camps, and we have seen demonstrations against the government uh, despite this uh, situation of war and perceived threat and that is a remarkable phase of Israeli history, and it is very difficult okay. for Israelis who are on the progressive side to accept the kind of warfare and the kind of the lack of political horizon and clarity of where this government is heading towards. And we see we've seen this growing and widening gulf between the U.S. administration and the Israeli government at, uh, at, at, in the same way because of the same reasons. Okay, finally, and I want your brief response to this one, Doctor. Many critics say a ceasefire or truce is now turning to be a facade. There hasn't been any breakthrough since last year, and the talks keep being postponed. Your thoughts? Well, I think now, at least in the international community, uh, calls for a ceasefire and not only a temporary 
cause of hostilities, but a ceasefire have become louder and, uh, and the Israeli government has become more under pressure to accept something uh, more lasting. Uh, that doesn't have to be uh, something uh, forever, but at least longer than a few days as it used to be before. Of course, the question is what happens after this ceasefire? Is there any willingness of the parties and also especially of the Israeli government to embark on a discussion of a political solution uh, knowing that the interim solutions of military um, uh, deterrence have not worked. So we, we need this kind of combination of a ceasefire plus a political horizon. I think this would be key for this region in uh, not only Israel and the Palestinians, but for the entire region. Dr. Karsten Willand, thank you very much for talking to We On Wild as One today. Thank you for having me. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.